Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are HVAC control boards, their operation, and we need to know how they work in order to troubleshoot them. So I'm going over what the differences in these three control boards are, how they work, and some of the issues that you could run into with these boards. First, this is an integrated furnace control board, and this is as if you had an ignition module and an EFT, an electronic fan timer board, all in one. As well, this has extra safety built into it, and it's also able to power the humidifier to turn on or the electronic air cleaner to turn on. So this is a more sophisticated board than these are. The application for this is in gas furnaces. Uh, this one right here is in a, uh, a maybe a furnace or a boiler. It could be an older furnace that has a fan limit switch to control the blower motor. You could use an electronic fan timer such as this right here to control the blower motor in a furnace that has an ignition module. So you know, this one, because you see it says PV, controls a pilot valve first to ensure that the flame is lit or the gas is lit first before powering its main valve. This one uh, is able to power the main gas valve right away. It's called direct ignition and it's able to prove the flame during the main direct ignition. This right here is the electronic fan timer board where when you power the G terminal on this, it's going to wait maybe anywhere from one to seven seconds to power the blower motor. On this particular board, it's seven seconds. And then when you take the 24 volts off the G terminal, it then takes somewhere between 30 and 90 seconds before the blower motor turns off again. And that will depend on the board itself. But some of the problems with these boards, they're typically blamed as being the problem when they're not. It could be just be a loose connection, which I find a lot. I find loose connections in these uh, connectors, basically with the power off to a furnace uh, or a air handler, you wanna go ahead and push each of the wires in. And you wanna make sure that they're making good contact. You might take the plug off and just check the connections, make sure they're not loose on the uh, on the inside of the plug and then you can plug them back in. You want to make sure that all your connections are nice and tight. They're not corroded or anything like that. Another problem you could have is the relays. So there could be pitting on the contacts and that just is due to use over time and maybe the amperage going across those contacts and maybe they're just not making a good contact and it's not sending the correct voltage to the blower motor or to the inducer motor. Uh, that's the problem. It could be an intermittent issue where sometimes they're connecting and sometimes they're just barely, barely touching. Once again, it has to do with the burnt connections on the contacts on the inside of these relays. Anytime you see a black box, that's a relay. So that's a relay. Of course, this is covered so you don't see, see the relays, but they're, they're in there as well. So these are not plug type ones where you can just unplug them and put a new one in. They're actually soldered into the board. So that's one issue that you could have. Of course, you could smell the board. You could visually inspect the board for a burnt connection. This one happens to be a defrost control board found on an outdoor heat pump. So there you can see uh, that that ended up popping. But you really need to know the sequence of operation of the board that you're looking at and the unit that the board is installed in in order to be able to diagnose the problem. So I have other videos on, on this particular board, the full sequence of operation for this. I have a full troubleshooting video for the EFT control board, another uh, for the ignition modules, actually several, depending on the types of ignition modules. There, there could be direct ignition or um, the pilot ignition. You could have multiple different types of, uh, you could have a spark or you could have a hot surface igniter. I also have one video that has six of these in it and we, I go over the differences of them. But you really need to know what you're looking at beforehand in order to, to troubleshoot it. And you gotta realize that when you have, you're, you're powering a blower motor, a, a lot of times you're gonna have a delay. This particular one has a delay during heating mode. So it's pretty simple when you just turn the fan on on a control board like this. When you put 24 volts on the SEC one, as the hot and the SEC2, that's the common. The 24 volts has to go through this fuse. If the fuse is burnt, you know, that you could visually inspect it, usually it's black, and that would mean that, that there's a problem, maybe there's a short in the thermostat wire or one of the 24 volt safety sensors or wires, that could be the problem. Uh, but 
So after the 24 volts goes through the intact fuse, it then goes through safety devices, and one of those could be open. Maybe that's why, maybe the blower motor's running all the time, or it's just not turning on. You could have your thermal limit, such as this one right here, which is located in the heat exchanger area of a furnace. So this could be open. It's supposed to be normally closed, but it could be open. Now this one is supposed to reset automatically, whereas a flame rollout switch such as this right here, which has a red button and is located at the combustion chamber of a furnace, this could be open. Now, if there's a problem, this is mounted on the combustion chamber area, and if a flame were to roll out and open this up, you don't wanna just keep pressing in on this red button and manually resetting it. That means that you could have a cracked heat exchanger and you could be putting carbon monoxide into the building and that is very dangerous to be breathing in. So you wanna inspect the, the heat exchanger to see if there's a problem. But this could be, the electrical connection could be open and that's why your blower motor may be continuing to run or you may have a status light code. These control boards, this one even has a status light but it's gonna have fewer uh, troubleshooting problems that it's detecting compared to a integrated furnace control board such as this one right here. If you see the status light blinking you want to look at the short flashes and the long flashes and compare that to the on the shroud there should be a list of the status codes and it will kind of give you a, a direction of where to look at. So maybe it says that there's a problem with the pressure switch or the condensate. It has to do with the pressure switch. So the pressure switch is normally open when the furnace is not calling for heat to turn on, so you don't have 24 volts on the W. This is what a pressure switch looks like. So those connections should be normally open. So it could also look like this, but those electrical connections should be open between here and here. So on this particular board, it sends a 24 volt signal out of this block to the pressure switch, and then it comes out through the other wire and back to the control board. It's trying to see if the inducer motor over here is, is working properly, that there's no uh, problem with the exhaust or something like that. So if you are not powering uh, the W right here to turn this heat sequence on, but you do have this closed, you're gonna have a status light uh, as well. If you were to power the W and during the sequence of operation of the furnace, what happens is you are first powering the 120 volts to the inducer motor and that's pushing the exhaust outside. It's actually gonna be pulling the exhaust through the heat exchanger, and the pressure switch is there to prove that the inducer motor is running and that there's no problems with the exhaust or on a 90% efficient furnace that the condensate is not backing up. After the pressure switch is closed, the 24 volts makes it back to this uh, control board. What's happening is then on this board, you're sending 120 volts to the hot surface igniter. So it could look like this one. So this is a silicon carbide and this is a silicon nitride. But you see that this one has a white spot on it right here. That means that it's actually burnt apart. So you can actually test the resistance value of this. So you can just turn the furnace off. So say there's a problem at this part of the sequence of operation and you're supposed to be sending 120 volts to the HSI. You can test in this plug for 120 volts, but you could also turn the power off and take a resistance reading by unplugging this and putting your multimeter on. And you, if you read OL, then that means that this HSI is bad. Or if you read an extremely high resistance reading in, in kilo ohms or, or mega ohms, that's also an indication that this is cracked. So this could be the problem. Some control boards have a spark ignition instead of a hot surface ignition. In fact, this ignition module right here has a spark wire right here and it's gonna send anywhere from six to 10,000 volts in order to ignite the flame. But anyway, after the HSI is powered, the hot surface igniter, you're gonna be powering the 24 volt gas valve, allowing gas to go through. This is a direct ignition, so it's going to allow the full gas through. In this case, it's a pilot valve, so it's only gonna allow the, the, the pilot uh, gas, only a small amount of gas to go and get lit first. This board right here is going to be looking for a flame signal. It's called flame rectification. So what you're doing is you're sending AC voltage, somewhere between say 90 and 110 volts to the flame rod. And there's nothing special about the flame rod or flame sensor. It's just a stainless steel rod that gets enveloped by the flame once the fuel gas gets ignited. So you send AC voltage to the flame. The flame rectifies the AC and you have DC microamps is being measured on the other side 
because the flame is touching the ground. So it touches the ground on the burner retention head and you have a dedicated wire from the ground frame coming back to the control board. And on that control board, you're sending about two to three DC microamps to that terminal. If the signal falls below 0.5, then the control board is going to shut off the 24 volts to the electrical gas valve, and so the flame will get shut off. Now, if that happens, it could be a bad ground to the furnace. It could be a dirty flame rod, so you could turn the power off to the furnace and then go ahead and clean this rod with non-soap steel wool. So you could have a problem with this or just the ground in general on the furnace, and that's messing up that flame rectification signal. So in that case, it's, the, it's a problem that is not the board, uh, but you could have a problem with the board even if you measured the signal. Ignition control boards can have that built in as well, and it would receive it on the GND as a, as a signal for the flame rectification. Now, this board right here, it's specifically only for the blower motor, and that's it. Like, it, is, it does not control anything that has to do with the flame. That's why this is typically used in air handlers. But once again, this could be used in conjunction with this ignition module, and it could have some other relays involved in order to know when to power the, the, the blower motor and when to send the signal over to the, the control board after the, the flame is lit. So after the flame is proven by the control board through the flame rectification process, then after that you have a time delay before the, the blower motor is going to be powering the relay and sending the 120 volts from the input over to the, the heat. So on this control board right here, it's this tap. You're putting your, your blower motor wire, whatever speed wire you, you want at the blower motor, you're attaching it right here for your heat and it's gonna be powering the 120 volts to the blower motor after the heat exchanger warms up. So in this case, it might be a 30 second on delay. And then after you lose your signal to the 24 volts on the, the W terminal right here, it's then going to wait. And it may be 60 seconds, 90 seconds before the blower motor turns off and it's cooling the heat exchanger down. So I say all this just so you know the sequence of operation. You really need to know the sequence in which you're supposed to be powering off of this control board uh, in order to troubleshoot if there's a problem with the board and and to know if there's a problem with one of the components that the control board is either monitoring or or powering so you need to be able to to know that so i have another video on troubleshooting a control board which is an ifc i have multiple videos on the ignition modules they're all linked down in the description section below i also have a video on an electronic fan timer board and testing that with a multimeter also, air conditioning season is coming right up, and I want you to check out our, our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. We have the full outline available over at our website at acservicetech.com. We also have an ebook available there. We also sell the, the paperback and quick reference cards over at amazon.com. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.